first speaker. Thank you, President. Thank you for the lively debate. I've wrote down some of the arguments from the skeptics. Firstly, that we need more time. I think we've discussed every problem right down the line, and uh, we've done so over the last uh, th two or three years. And th there's been enough exchanges. We need a decision. Eco schemes, these are not voluntary but mandatory for member states. They're m optional for farmers. I don't understand uh, all the skepticism about farmers. They're the ones who are going to solve the problem. If eco-schemes are sensibly implemented by member states, of course they'll adopt them. And uh, they're giving up 30% uh, of their income uh, from doing that. And uh, we can see that probably farmers, based on path programs, will be more uh, likely to participate than there is money available. Also, compromise... Uh, well, three or four big groups apparently should be in the compromise. That may uh, look like it's right, but it's not. Uh, we're from the right, the left. Anyone who reads the compromise will see the suggestions of other groups incorporated into the compromises, which have been set up in such a way deliberately that they can achieve as much consensus as possible. Fourth, that it's an old system. Well, we've decisively improved the Commission proposal and the conversion from... Uh, an approach based on policy measures to a results-based approach is the biggest revolution since the McSherry reforms in 92. Let's together take this opportunity once and for all to go for a results-based agricultural policy. Not enough support for farms? Well, then you must like our redistribution premiums. And then I would make an appeal. Help me out, uh, Shadows, in achieving... Uh, decisions here. Let's make the world a bit better by voting for these reforms. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed, Ms. Thea. Last but not least, Ms. Ulrike Miller. The Common Agricultural Policy has for decades been a cornerstone of our European Union, one that has been bringing together the regions in this diverse union. The diverse regions that are home to Europe's citizens. United in diversity, that's the EU's motto, and it applies particularly to farming and rural areas. Rural and farming practices have shaped um, Europe's societal fabric over years. It's also given its um, regions its identity as it has to wider society. Now, this CAP is in defense of the regional areas, we, and it's in favor of diversity. If we want to strengthen and support the diverse farming practices, I'm convinced that in doing so we will defend biodiversity, uh, we will defend the environment and protect the climate, and most importantly, we will be able to produce high-quality food. It's also providing an opportunity to farmers themselves because they can plan for the future and can guarantee their incomes. There are three key words here. Performance needs to be honoured. That was a key requirement. Flexibility for the different and diverse regions. We've been able to include that too with the strategic plans. Simplification in the member states for simplification of the administrative procedures. Once again, that's been uh, granted. Now, this may not be the best possible agreement. I think, Peter, you and I will agree on that. But I think we're equally convinced that we're on track now. We can move forward away from compliance, move forward towards performance, and make farmers um, the bosses of their own Farms Now, when it we look at Rule 83.3 um, of the Rules of Procedure, perhaps we could look at all the... In, why do we have to use follow this stipulated order of voting on the amendments that's been agreed on? Perhaps a few explanations on the procedure would be useful. Uh, thank you and support the farmers. Thank you. I'd like to thank both of the rapporteurs, and I'd like to now invite 
the Commissioner, Commissioner Wojciechowski, to uh, sum up the debate on behalf of the Commission. Thank you, President. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a really fascinating debate. I think you've provided a very sound review of all most important issues related to European agriculture, a review that was done from various points of view, and uh, usually from such debates we can create uh, effective solutions and good compromises. So thank you for that. Obviously, due to uh, limited time, I won't be able to refer to all over 80 uh, speeches that I've heard during this debate, but I will uh, refer to some of the statements on behalf of political groups and also on the statements uh, on, uh, of coordinators. Madam Sander, uh, you mentioned uh, the importance of uh, CAP. Uh, this uh, uh, was mentioned by also Mr. De Castro, but also many other people. I think that we've actually have gone a long way to make sure that we strengthen uh, the uh, community aspects. You remember 2018 and the proposals of the European Commission. I know they raised some concerns, so I would like to take this opportunity and thank you, especially members of the Agri Committee in the European Parliament, for this debate, uh, for the debates that were very inspiring for the European Commission. Uh, the eco schemes, 30% obligatory. Some of the other proposals that came from the European Parliament will definitely stick to them and we will try to promote them. I think it's a step forward uh, towards um, eliminating certain misgivings that we might have when it comes to the community aspect of the CAP. On the one hand, we have to take account of major disproportions or divisions that still exist between countries, regions, sectors. That's why uh, sectoral framework is very important, but what is also very important is what we have worked on here today. So again, this community aspect of the CAP. Madam Garcia Perez, you mentioned food security, and this is actually something that was mentioned by other speakers as well. I believe that this reform will boost food security in Europe. We'll be able to better protect our land, will be able to move towards more eco-friendly solutions. Thus, we will protect our planet, protect, protect our environment. And I think in the long run, we'll, we will boost uh, food security for our citizens. Uh, Mr. Huitema, you mentioned direct payments. But uh, we also know that it would be much better if uh, farmers were able, would be, were able to self-sustain uh, based on income they generate from their core activity. I know that uh, that was the original vision 60 years ago. Uh, people discovered that uh, agriculture is not simply business as any other business. It's a special type of activity that needs to be supported. And without the support, our farmers are simply not able to um, fight, especially international competition, or because they encounter numerous difficulties. And that's why we need to provide support to our farmers in Europe. And I think we have to stick to the support. I don't see any other way out. You also mentioned local conditions and conditionality. I think that the national strategic plans would be the perfect place to take account of those uh, local conditions. And I think this reform gives you a lot of space to do that. Madam Bizzotto, you mentioned something which is very important. A country without agriculture is a country uh, without a future. And I fully agree. I think what we're trying to do here is to support agriculture, to make sure that the EU as a whole, all member states, do not become countries without farming, with no agriculture. What we do for small farms, for instance, because I'm d deeply convinced that this reform is about that, and when we build strategic plans, I'll try to make sure that small farms are 
are even more integrated into the system of the CAP. They should be at the heart of the CAP. As a result, countries, member states of uh, the EU will never be countries with no agriculture and thus no future. Mr. Hoisling mentioned something that we worry about, 80 to 20 percent. 80 small farms receives 20 percent of EU monies and the 20 percent of the bigger players have 80 percent of the funds at, at their disposals. I believe that thanks to eco schemes we'll be able to change this equation. Maybe not to it won't be fully satisfactory at this stage, but still. You also mentioned that, that eco-schemes is actually a good thing for small farms. And I'm deeply convinced, and I know that the European Commission is convinced as well, that we can do this. Small farms that sometimes find it hard to face competition and basically go bust. Very often we lose them, 4 million within 10 years. I believe that we can stop this process thanks to this reform, thanks to including small farms into eco-schemes. Colleagues, 30%, it will be over 80 billion euros for eco-schemes. In smaller farms, I believe they will find it, uh, it easier to tap into this potential. I'm sure it won't be difficult to encourage small farmers to enter into eco-schemes. They will be at the heart of eco-schemes. I'm really reassured here because you were saying that maybe some funds will not be fully absorbed. We have to be uh, watching over this. We don't want to money, the money to go to waste. But I believe that those small farmers will be definitely interested into, in uh, using eco-schemes. Then we had Mr. Uh, Ruizen, who mentioned uh, the size of the budget and the lack of central planning or managing. Uh, we will have a new system where more decision-taking or control-making will be um, given to member states, so less central, true. Uh, not big enough, also true. We always want more. But I would like to remind you that the current European Commission, I think it's the first time in history that the Commission introduced new higher budget by 26 billion euros. I know that the Council finally slightly cut this top up, but it still left us with 25, 21 billion uh, more. So I think that uh, Madame Neuschel also mentioned that. You mentioned that the Green Deal uh, was kind of Pace it over old proposals where, that we had for CAP. I would not agree. I know that formally it was an old proposal, but it was supplemented with many new uh, solutions under the Green Deal. I would like to remind you that we'll also have the second stage, the strategic plans and the dialogue between member states and the European Commission. And there you'll have, you will see uh, the uh, strategy from farm to fork or many other strategies becoming real. Uh, for instance, the strategy on reducing the emissions of methane in, uh, in uh, agriculture. Uh, then, Mr. Le Breton, uh, you mentioned that uh, CAP should not include things that are not farm-related. True, but you remember third pillar and now where was used also uh, to finance things that could have been financed from other sources like the cohesion fund or new instruments that will also help to support anything that is para agriculture. Mr. Dorfman, you uh, said that agriculture is not a hobby, it's an actual job. I would even go further. I would say agriculture is a mission. And I think that this report and uh, this reform and the new solutions will help us boost this mission going forward. Colleagues, again, thank you for this debate. Thank you for your proposals when it comes to solutions. Thank you for your compromises, the majority of which go into the right direction, especially when it comes to the key aspect, eco-schemes, but also uh, ring-facing for uh, eco-schemes. It's extremely important for this particular reform. Your proposals are very good, sound proposals. 
I would like to conclude saying that I'm a farmer myself. I was brought up on a farm. I know farmers, and we used to have a rule, and I think this still applies. It's not so much about profit at all cost. But what matters is to leave your farm in the best possible condition, to pass it on to the new generation in the best possible condition, better land, better uh, welfare for your animals. This has always been the overall objective, uh, the ultimate obje objective for any farmer. And I believe that with this reform, we'll be able to leave our farming, our industry, uh, in a much better form for future generations. That would be the, uh, the most important objective. Thank you. F thank you for your cooperation. I hope we achieve it together. Thank you. Herr Kommissar, herzlichen Dank für Ihre Thank you, Commissioner, for your positive summary, and I'd like to ask colleagues to uh, note that uh, 85 uh, speakers' contributions t uh, were taken in the joint debate, and the 85 statements show how seriously people uh, take this topic and how uh, this issue uh, impacts on people in rural communities and the economic, uh, social and ecological impact of the COP is so important. This is a topic that affects all citizens. To conclude, uh, Mrs. Muller, I must inform you about the following change to the agenda. You asked about the consultations with the groups. Well, the results of the third uh, voting round today will be at uh, 11 p.m. today, uh, Tuesday the 20th, rather than tomorrow morning. So that's for the announcement of the voting results uh, from the third voting round. But on your question about the various uh, voting deadlines and the reallocation of them, the idea is that the number of the submitted amendments f and the request for split and separate votes uh, should be taken into account. This was a package, uh, this redistribution of the voting deadlines, uh, to take into account the individual points. The information on the new uh, distribution of votes is on the website of the European Parliament under priority information. That's where you will be able to visualize the information. Can I ask whether uh, there are any objections to the redistribution and the new uh, time for the announcement of the third uh, voting round results? If not, then that change will be adopted and the votes on the amendments will be taking place today, tomorrow and on Thursday and Friday and the final vote will be on Friday. I think that will ensure that the whole package uh, can be dealt with in a manageable fashion by splitting it up. But I would like to offer very warm thanks for the debate and uh, congratulations to those who were involved at uh, one. I will uh, be announcing the votes of the voting round today, but uh, till then the meeting stands adjourned and uh, enjoy your lunch.